The beautiful thing about modern recording equipment is that unlike my grandmother, you can put it in a home and it won't get all uppity. So today we're gonna go through just a couple different rigs uh, of different price points, depending on what your needs might be for getting into recording. And all the stuff I have either firsthand experience with or secondhand experience from a very trusted source. So uh, again, I used to work at Guitar Center and Pro Audio, so I know a lot of these companies. I've actually heard a lot of them and uh, I have some opinions on some things. Now, if you are if you have stuff that isn't on this list, that's fine because there's so much good stuff out there nowadays that uh, you know a lot of the stuff in the same price point is gonna be very similar. But we're just gonna talk about a few different rigs. So off to the first rig, the beginner's rig. And this is simply just a USB microphone. And some people will be like, oh, you can't do anything with a USB microphone. That is absolutely wrong. I think that kind of doesn't take into account a lot of budget constraints that some people might have. I know the Blue Yeti microphone is actually pretty decent. All it is, microphone that plugs into your computer with the USB cable, and then you can get audio into your computer. Because I think a really important thing is just getting experience. Like if you have ambitions to get into recording, but you don't have the money to do it, and you're, you know, it becomes an excuse. Like, oh, if I only had like $2,000, I could get the rig that I want to and start recording. Well, that's not an excuse because you can get a USB microphone and just get working on it, kind of find a DAW or some kind of software program that you want to use and uh, just start getting on your chops because it really is about the experience of just recording, playing to a click, moving pieces around, arranging, all that stuff that the sooner you can get started, the better because the gear only matters to a certain point. So definitely, great gear is better than bad gear, but if you're just getting started, quit making excuses, get something. USB microphone is a great way to just jump in there. Again, it's something that long-term you're probably not gonna keep, and I guess kind of the theme of a lot of the stuff in this video is that you can upgrade. The thing about a USB microphone is once you probably get into like an interface, then you're probably not gonna use your USB microphone, but a solid way to just start getting into stuff and just start kind of working and getting familiar with like the tools. The gentleman's rig. So basically the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna break into kind of like three different price point tiers for a more kind of serious rig. And what I mean by that is there's gonna be an interface, a microphone, and ways to monitor and hear what you're doing. Now I'm not gonna go over DAWs because there's so many different ones out there and they all essentially do the same thing and that's really kind of like a personal preference thing. I personally use Logic, that's only available on Apple, but by no means is that better than Pro Tools or Reaper or really anything else. So we're not gonna talk about, talk about that and we're not gonna talk about computers because again, there's a million different things. So we're gonna kind of operate under the assumption that you can read the proper computer specs for an interfaces, but most modern computer computers can handle some kind of interface, so don't worry about it. Anyways, the first interface we're gonna talk about is the Focusrite Scarlett Solo. It's only $100, it's perfectly fine. You can plug a microphone into it, you can plug a guitar into it, a bass keyboard, whatever. You can only do one channel at a time, which is a drawback, but you can kind of layer those things. So you can maybe record the guitar first, record the vocal second, and then start layering them up. So the limitation of it is you can only record one thing at a time, but again, for just kind of getting started, it's fine. The preamp sounds okay. It's not like the greatest thing in the world, but it definitely doesn't sound like garbage. So, uh, you know, Focusrite is a company that makes a lot of cool stuff, and I think the solo is maybe something you want to get into. Now, as far as getting a microphone to use that with, we're going to go over a condenser microphone. Another assumption that we're making is this is going to be something to capture more of an analog sound, whether it be acoustic guitar. You can still use this to mic a, a guitar amplifier if you want. Uh, there might be better microphones for that. That's the thing about microphones. There's a million different microphones. They'll have kind of different things that they're better at, but a decent microphone you can use on anything and you'll get you know a generally okay replication of the sound that you're going for. So for the cheaper microphones, and what I consider cheap is under $100, uh, the AKG P120 I think is actually pretty decent. Now, the one microphone that I will totally hate on is the MXL 990. I think that's absolute garbage microphone and like, like people bought those in like the hundreds of thousands. So I'm not a fan of the 990. I thought the AKG ones were the best ones for stuff in that price range, but again, there's other stuff uh, you know, that will, will do the same trick around the same kind of thing. And again, remember, all this stuff is upgraded. You can start with maybe like a Focusrite Scarlett and a cheap AKG mic, and then maybe transition to a better microphone or a better interface, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna be able to hear yourself somehow uh, record and then kind of play back and mix. 
So you want a decent set of headphones. And if you don't have the money uh, for like a decent set of headphones, and I think a decent set of studio headphones is like $100, $150, something like that. Uh, Sennheiser makes an HD 206 that usually is under $40. And you know, those, those are fine. They do the job to you. So uh, definitely good budget pair of headphones. And then optionally, you might want to look into getting monitors. So studio monitors are supposed to be speakers that are balanced and their job isn't necessarily to sound good, they're supposed to sound true. So what that means is if you mix on a set of decent monitors, uh, if you get it sounding good on those monitors, then uh, hopefully it'll sound good in your car, it'll sound good in headphones, it'll sound good on any kind of like playback system. So again, that's kind of tricky to uh, get the experience to get that to really work for you. But uh, in the cheaper selection of those, I think the JBL LSR 300 series ones are pretty decent. I've heard those and they sound great. There's not a lot of bottom end, but you know, for the price, I think they're pretty good. And usually when you see monitors, studio monitors sold, uh, like these ones go for like 129. That's usually just uh, for one monitor. So you're gonna want two, a left and a right, so you can mix in stereo. So that would be like 260. Monitors are something that, you know, if, if you're just getting into it for the first time, they can seem kind of like exorbitantly expensive to do that. You know, if you just wanna get by using computer monitors at first, you know, that's cool. Like I said, whatever gets you kind of just into the grind and learning the craft is what you want. But I think in that price range, those, those JBLs are pretty cool. Now, the only other thing that you have to take into consideration are cables for everything. So for instance, in the gentleman's rig, you're gonna need a cable to connect the microphone to the interface. So you're gonna need an XLR microphone cable. And then you're gonna need two cables to connect the interface to the monitors, assuming you get monitors. And generally, sometimes you have an option of going either quarter inch, like uh, on the Scarlett, uh, or XLR, like a microphone cable on some of the different interfaces. But basically when it comes to cables, there's a lot of them out there and I'm not gonna actually list one because, you know, depending on your situation, you might have different lengths that you require. But my rule of thumb on cables, if you're trying to be cheap about it, don't buy the cheapest cable, buy the second cheapest cable because I've had so many cables go out over the years and I was fortunate enough to work at Guitar Center for a while so I got a bunch of Megami cables which are like the best cables for cheap. So those are actually the ones that I use but uh, again, I've used you know the second cheapest cables for a while now and they have gotten the job done and I personally can't really hear much of a difference. Moving on to the King's Rig. Now this is where it's gonna be a biggest jump in the quality of the interface. So I really like Universal Audio stuff and the Universal Audio Apollo Twin, I think is a really fantastic interface. Now on the surface, it might not seem like that, like it's like, I think the entry level one is like seven times more expensive than the Focusrite one. It might not seem like that big of a jump up from the Focusrite one, because it's still only like a two channel interface. So now you can do two things at once instead of just uh, one at a time. But I think that the preamps and the technology that goes into it is actually kind of worth it. Now, if you're still looking at maybe doing something that requires more than just two channels, like say you wanna get into recording a drum kit or even like a full band, at once. You need something with more channels, so more inputs. Now, uh, there's another Focusrite Scarlett upgrade that actually has like an eight channel interface uh, where you can do eight things at once. It comes with eight different preamps, which is a really good deal at $4.99. So the nice thing about that is if you wanted to record like a drum kit and you wanna put seven different microphones on it, you can actually do all that at once simultaneously. So that's pretty cool. But I like the Universal Audio one because I know for a lot of people, uh, they're kind of doing like a solo home recording thing and just having two channels, two really solid channels is fine. And preamps are always something that you can upgrade. Like I don't really even use any of the stock preamps on my interface. I have other stuff that I'm kind of just plugging into. So again, a lot of the stuff is scalable, which is kind of something that you want to look for. Uh, the microphone, the next microphone step up would be the Blue Bluebird, which at $2.99, I think is like a really good deal. And to me, when I got that, that was like a big, a big jump up fidelity wise from what I was using. And I personally think that like even up to like a $500 microphone that the Bluebird is still gonna sound pretty good. I mean, it has its drawbacks, like sometimes it can sound like a little bright, but I just think like the clarity of that microphone is really good, especially for the money. So I'm a fan of the Blue Bluebird. Now, headphone wise, uh, the next step up, I think the lowest, 
the the lowest priced what I consider serious headphones that I that I think sound really good and have felt comfortable kind of like mixing on are going to be uh, the Shure SRH series headphones. So like a hundred dollars, they're very comfortable headphones. Uh, ear fatigue doesn't really set in. They're they have like a nice full sound and they're pretty durable. So I like those Shure headphones. And then monitor wise, I'm going to go with the Yamaha HS5. So they're five inch monitors, which is a big step up from the JBL ones. In fact, if you can afford to swing it, I would actually recommend the Yamaha ones over the JBL ones, even though they're only like $70 more per side, because those Yamaha ones are really good. Now, if you're doing some kind of like, like house music that requires like a lot of low end, maybe look into getting like an eight inch monitor that has a lot more bass resp response. But for kind of like what I do and what I've like helped people do, the Yamaha five inch ones are actually just perfect. And now to the Emperor's rig, which is essentially just my rig that I currently have right now. So again, like I said, I really like the universal audio stuff. So I have an Apollo eight, which uh, is kind of like a pretty legit interface that I think is uh, really good. Again, it's kind of pricey for sure. It's like $2,500. But the nice thing is it does a lot of its processing on its own. So it doesn't require your computer to do all the heavy lifting when it comes to like using plugins and stuff like that. And it has a lot of outputs and something that you might think uh, when you're looking at interfaces, like why do I need so many outputs? Like don't I just need two for like a stereo like monitor thing? Uh, well, considerations you might have for that is like maybe if you want to get into like mixing film or surround sound, surround sound stuff, like those are like, like a 5.1 system has, you know, five and a sub, which means you need six outputs at least to mix and surround. That's important to some people. To most people, I would say it's not important at all. Uh, if you want to do any reamping, like say you have like a guitar track signal that you know is really good, but you want to like send the guitar signal out that you already recorded into uh, an amplifier and reamp it and then mic that up again. It's really helpful to have extra outputs like that. Or if you get into some kind of like analog summing system like what I use, uh, it's really good to have those extra outputs. So again, when I first got in, I was like, why do I need this many outputs? But then there are actual practical reasons that you might not ever need, but that's just one reason that you have so many outputs and why that's valuable to an interface. And you can actually expand uh, the amount of inputs going on at once to like, to like more than just eight. So you can do a lot with it. So again, Kind of pricey, but to me, it's worth it, and I think it's a, it's a really solid unit. Uh, Microphone-wise, the Audio-Technica AT4050, I think is fantastic. Uh, for $700, it's definitely not a cheap microphone, but I think it punches way above its price range. So uh, if you want to, I can even link you to a video that I did shooting it out against Neumann uh, U87, which I think it held its own pretty, pretty well for being like a fraction of the price. Headphone wise, my absolute favorite headphones of all time are the Audio-Technica ATH M50s. Uh, I've had three different sets of these over like the last decade and they're fantastic. I would totally feel comfortable mixing on just these, he these headphones alone and they're comfortable, no ear fatigue, fantastic headphones. You can even kind of just like jam out with them even if you're not in the studio, uh, big fan of those. And then monitor wise, the Adams A7X monitors I think are really fantastic. Uh, they're definitely kind of like legendary. They're almost like a studio standard. Like a lot, a lot of people use them. They're really popular. But anyways, that would be like a like an emperor's rig. Now, depending on what your goals are, you might need some more stuff. Like uh, we didn't even talk about dynamic microphones. Like if you wanted to mic a guitar cab, uh, the first choice to mic something like that might not be the microphones that I've listed. You could totally do it and get good results. But uh, a nice dynamic microphone, like an Audix i5 or a Shure SM57, is a relatively cheap solution to something like that. It's like $100, sometimes less than $100, and they're awesome. And you can use it in basically any rig. So you buy it once and you'll have it like probably for the rest of your life. It'll outlive even you. Those things are so durable. So those are really nice. And maybe another consideration is getting some kind of MIDI keyboard, which essentially uh, what that is, it's just kind of like a keyboard that doesn't make any noise on its own, but when you plug it via a USB into a computer, you can trigger different software samples, uh, which might be like a professionally recorded piano. So you actually play like, you know, a note on your cheap MIDI keyboard and it triggers a sample of a professionally recorded piano or, you know, any number of insane amounts of instruments, even drums that you could do. Thing about MIDI keyboards, uh, if you have the space and the budget for it, I would actually recommend getting a full-size 88 keyboard digital piano because those usually play a lot better, like the responsiveness is a lot better, and almost all of them have like USB out 
MIDI output. Eh? So it'll actually feel more like an instrument than kind of like a smaller, just like piece of plastic. But a lot of people like those MIDI keyboards and they can get good results from them. So basically, those are just some of just kind of like some tips on gear that I have experience with that uh, I can vouch for. Again, I'm not endorsed by anybody. So this is just all stuff that I've used or close friends have used and that has stood the test of time. So really, again, mix and match any of these. The great thing about building like your recording rig is it can always be a work in progress, which can be a good or a bad thing. And you can kind of upgrade pieces as you go along. You don't have to get everything at once, but uh, definitely uh, I think it's something you should get into because it will really increase your musicianship just being able to record your ideas down and just play over them even if you don't have ambitions of like cutting an album or anything like that. So hopefully this was helpful and if you have any questions or comments hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.